Thanks for joining us on the Face the Facts YouTube page. I am joined now by Senator Martin from uh, Bristol. He is involved in transportation and funding and bonding, and we wanted to talk to him specifically about how we are going to pay for our aging infrastructure, our aging bridges like the Devon Rail Bridge, the swing bridge that needs to be replaced, like the choke points on I-95, the Mixmaster and Waterbury, a project that's been trying to get underway for so many years. Uh, first and foremost, how do we pay for something like this? So Mike Weave, the Republican caucus, has, been, has had uh, an answer to that since 2015, okay. since I joined the state legislature, and that was prioritizing progress, where we show how to pay for these uh, the infrastructure costs without placing an extra burden on the, on the uh, Connecticut taxpayers. Tolls are a non-starter for you? Absolutely. Yeah? Why do you say that? Well, listen, the state of Connecticut, uh, we are, the business community has been screaming for years, you got to stop with all the mandates, you got to mm -hmm. stop with the taxes. You hear it on a regular basis from the constituents of, of, in my district anyway, and throughout the whole state. It's the, same, it's the same voices that are saying the same thing. Listen, we are taxed enough, you can't place another burden on us, yep. and tolls will be an extra burden on people of Connecticut. So when you say prioritize, what does that mean? If there's one project in Connecticut you think that needs to be prioritized right now, if something doesn't happen soon, there's going to be a catastrophic failure, where do you look? Well, listen, I, I think the identifying of those bridges and the road, those roads or railways that are, are in dire needs, I, I think it is there. So We've seen the studies. There's just a libertarian study that just came out. There's been other studies in the last year or so that say, look, this is structurally deficient to the point where we need to replace it now. We've had some. We had uh, one replaced down in the Stanford area recently. We had another replaced up in Rocky Hill. Um, yeah. It seems like there's a so, lot more to do. So we can't do all the construction projects all at one time. That's not realistic, correct? Okay. Yep. So and even re regarding the widening of certain roads, you can't widen 91 or 95, as an example, at the same place on both sides of the road. You no. can only do one at one side of the road right. in order for not to really bottleneck the whole uh, the whole infrastructure there. Yep. Uh, but perhaps you can do something up on 95 or Route 8 or another part of the state at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you know that you can you need you're going to have capital expenditures on that annual basis. Okay. And you put a plan into place regarding okay what are the priorities how much are they going to cost and then plan accordingly. So you, in the years one through five here's what we're going to be doing six to ten here's what the other projects are going to be doing. To the average and, commuter to the voter it feels like very little is getting done. We do see some projects, but it seems like, you know, the Mixmaster alone, they paint the bottom of the bridges, and then it seems like that's it. It's like so, the pavement is still awful, it's still too close together to get through there. That's a big project. Well, after that project is done, that <laughs> lifespan of that Mixmaster will yep. be another 30 years. Okay. So we're spending, what, $153 million on that project yep. currently. Right. So is it the solution that perhaps would be the best solution? Perhaps not. No. But 30 years is still a long time while you're repairing other uh, other areas of the state that are in most more need than the mix master after the completion of it. So no tolls, no increase in the gas tax. When you prioritize, you think that this should be a 30-year plan and focus your annual funding on one of those projects and then go from there. Is that am well, I, I think you clear? I think I believe that you should identify the projects that are most need. Clear, clearly, that's what you need to do. But we have, uh, through the prioritizing progress, we show how to how to provide an additional seven hundred million dollars a year to the Department of Transportation, along with federal money, which is another seven hundred and fifty million dollars right. a year. And currently, I think we bond for we we provide them seven hundred million dollars. So it, it, the bottom line is, we give them over two million two billion dollars mm -hmm. a year for the next thirty years. Should there be a lockbox? Should transportation funds be exclusive to transportation funds? Well, we thought when we established the Special Transportation Fund back in 1984 that that was the lockbox. We found out that it was not. And currently, we by, by state, uh, you know, we, we allowed the voters uh, last year to, to, uh, to vote yes or no on a constitutional lockbox, and it came back yes. However, we found out re recently that it wasn't so locked. After all, <laughs> Senator Henry Martin, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. If you like some other Face the Facts YouTube videos, just click on the side. This is Face the Facts with NBC Connecticut.